at home with, uh, what's your name? Virginia Vivian Veronica Tchaikovsky Semeca. Woo-hoo! Well, we just call you Ginge, if you don't mind. Right. <laughs> okay. Most people call me Ginger, Grandma Ginger. So, when were you born? 11 4 27. Ah, so you're older than your husband. Yep. No, I'm not. Oh, he said he was born in 33. He's born in 23. He lies. <laughs> never lies. He never lies. <laughs> you look beautiful. Where were you born? I was born in Massport, Queens on Fulton Street. You... The house my mom and dad owned. Oh, really? Yes. Now, you, there's a long story with you. I mean, how many kids do you have in your family? Ten. I was one of six girls and four boys. But you were like second to last, right? Yeah, I was number nine. Number nine out of ten. Now, when you were born, though, there was some already had passed away. Is that right? When you were yeah, born? Benny and Eddie. So they died like really young. Right. So you never even knew them. No. Okay, so so basically, when you were raised, you were one of eight active. Yes. Okay. All right. Now tell me about that. Tell me about those days now, because uh, I remember you telling me one time that you were the only one that was close to your father. Very, very close to my father. And like he's the, you were the only one, or were there others? No, there was others, but what I remember. Yeah. I don't know what they remember. Huh. But I remember, especially when he drank, because he was a good heavy drinker. Oh, really? Yeah, so he always took me to the store to get ice cream cones or candy, because the lady in the back had a speakeasy. That's what they used to call it in those days. What's that, speakeasy? It was prohibition time. We couldn't have liquor, so she sold it on the side. Oh. The back of a candy store. Hmm. So he would take me in there sober and come out bombed. <laughs> so I had to go get my mother to come get me home. <laughs> <laughs> now, your father left when you were how old? I was 10. And he went for a pack of cigarettes, really, he honestly? He went for cigarettes. He went to church on Sunday. And he took my violin and my mother's innards of a sewing machine. The sewing machine had and left the cabinet. And he took off. And they found him in 1948 and died in the street of Cl pneumonia. Close, though, right? Yeah, right around the corner, Greenpoint, next town over. He, was, he, he had no home? He was a bum? We have no idea. Nobody really knows. He lived in Florida, we understand, for the winter, and Greenpoint, Queens, 10 minutes away. Jeez, he died in 48. That's a year after you were married and a year before Maria. Yeah, he was 60 years old. He died very young. Of pneumonia? Yeah, well, he dropped dead in the street and stayed in the snow the night before Thanksgiving, they found him. The night before Thanksgiving, so this is just, you know, a couple of years ago. I mean, well, two days ago. 48. Yeah, okay. What is your fondest memory as a child? Being spoiled by my sisters and their boyfriends. Aha, uh -huh. which sisters particularly? Jean, Eleanor, and Wanda, all three oldest ones. Ah. Eleanor was already married when I was, well, no, she had a daughter when I was five, because she's only five years younger than I my hmm. niece or uh, Amelia. Now those three nieces already passed away, all three sisters passed away. Yeah, Jean, Eleanor Jean and Wanda passed away. Well, let's see. Now, Eleanor, what was her last name when she died? Wenski. Wenski. Any kids? Yes. Married once? Married once. Husband passed away? Joseph. No, he's still alive. He took care of her. She had Alzheimer's disease. Wow. Unfortunately. How many kids did she have? She had two, Amelia and Doreen, two girls. Okay. They're still out in Suffolk County. So they probably got married, so they probably, have, they probably have last names now, too. You probably don't even know. Well, what is Damiano? Damiano. Yes. I mean, Amelia? Your father is godfather to two of her children, Peter and Paul. Okay. <coughs> Damiano. Yeah, she oh. had a girl, too. And the other one? Doreen, I don't know too much about. She's upstate somewhere. I understand she works in the sheriff's department or something like that. Doreen, Naomi and Doreen, the ones that I met? The one that you met at my sister's funeral. Oh, Cardillo or something like that. I Cardillo, she was hooked up with the mafia somehow or something, yeah. right? Uh, is that the one? No, I'm thinking that... Yeah, that, that's the one. Yeah, you're she right. was Eleanor's kid, huh? Yeah, that's right. Okay, then the next kid is Aunt, then the next kid is Aunt Jean. Now, yeah, I remember Aunt Jean, Jean because she was going to always fry my guppies. Aunt Jean had seven children. Oh, my Lord. This is going to take forever. One died, Robert, in infancy. No, two died. I'm sorry. Now, her last name is Every, right? Every. Okay. She had seven children. She lost two. The first were Robert and one before Denise, Mary Ann. Okay. Mary Ann died of intersusception. Okay. And uh, what Robert died from, I don't know. All right, so how about her children that are alive? The children that are alive is Richard, Thomas, and Joni, and Denise. Now, Joni is Joni? 
Jolie Birch. Birch. Right. Okay. And she's got two girls, Kathy and Susan. Now they're probably she's married. Now too. So we don't even know Kathy and Susan's last name. Well, they probably changed, but that's okay. Yeah, she just sent me a letter, but I'm not sure of it. She okay. Has a husband named Michael and a son named Anthony. Right. And a daughter Kelsey. And now I don't know who the other one. Now was. that was one of the kids. Right. That was Kathy Joni's, my niece Joni's children, Susan and Kathy Birch. Because I remember Susan and Kathy Birch with the little girls used to come on the Christmas cards. Yeah. Those two yeah, little girls. The same girls. They're now one of them sent us away. a sent one of them sent us a picture. Yes. I mean also all this information. Which one was that, Kathy? That was Kathy's daughter. That sent us the picture and the information. That wasn't Kathy. They called Kathy Bachi. Okay. It's Kathy's daughter that that has the children now and moved. Okay, this is confusing. That's the ones that used to come here on the Christmas pictures. Kathy's daughter. Yes. Okay, now they have kids. Yes. Joni's okay. a grandma. So Joni Birch is a grandma. Yes. All right. Okay. Now, what else? Jean's kids. Richie's out in Suffolk County. You said Thomas. Wife. Tommy's in California. He's been married about five or six times. Okay. Yeah. We don't know too much about him, but Joni in, he lives in California. She sees him. Okay. And uh, Denise. Has two children, Nikki and uh, Lisa. The, the crazy, the, the young one, the yeah. crazy Denise. Crazy Denise. What's her last name now? Uh, Palmer. Palmer. Okay. Palmer. Now she still keeps in touch with Aunt Mary, doesn't she, Denise? Oh yeah, she still lives out there in Massachusetts. Okay. Then after Jean, you had Wanda. Wanda. Oh, Wanda was a little crazy, wasn't she? No, no that was I, Helen. No, Wanda, Wanda was a love. Don't what? say that, Helen. Okay. <laughs> Helen's very emotional, very young, you know, but we don't. <laughs> okay, but let's go back to Wanda. Wanda had three boys, Freddie, Eddie, and Teddy, Rover. Okay. Uh, the oldest one, Freddie, disappeared. We don't know too much about him. He was married and divorced. Uh, Ed is a lawyer, a big shot lawyer on 1100 Park Avenue, Manhattan. He's got adopted children, beautiful wife, Elizabeth. And Theodore was divorced. He is out here in Massapequa someplace. Though. He's a broker. Don't know too much about him. Massapequa? Yeah. Huh, okay. And that's it for that's boys, it. for Wanda. Wanda. Okay, then we get our first, our first boy, right? Then Howie, Harry. Harry's next? Harry Cherkowski has one daughter named Elaine and a wife, Lillian. They live in California. They're still going strong. We don't know anything about this daughter, what she's doing. Well, she's married, I understand, to a man with a five-year-old, so she adopted that child. I don't think she had any children of her own. Okay. And Raymond's in Hawaii. He's my oh, wait, there's somebody between the two boys. No, Benny and Eddie, they died. No, no, in between Raymond. Oh, ha Helen, I'm sorry. Right. Harry Hel and Helen. See, I know the order better than you. I know Helen Shamuktis is very, very happy. She's got loads of grandchildren. She had two boys, Roger, Stephen, and a girl, Peggy Ann. Roger and Stephen, what's the last name now? Sharmuxness. Sharmuxness, okay. Yeah. And Peggy Ann is now married. Does she have a last name? Yeah, but I don't know it offhand. And, but she's got a lot of kids. Yeah, no. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Helen has a lot of yeah. grandchildren from Roger and Stephen. Peggy has no children. Ah, so where do they all live? Are they nearby? They all live on Park and Mason. So close to where you were born? Oh, yeah. So they stay Same close. Place. Ah, so New York is through and through. Definitely. Now I know Raymond. Raymond's married, has two boys and a girl. Right. Living in Hawaii. Right. But yet, um, Roseanne lives here. Roseanne lives in Long Beach. Long She's Beach. the mother of two boys. Hmm. Uh, Sean, and I forgot the other kid's name. Very odd name, too. Yeah, but now you got the other two boys, Raymond and Ronald, and they live in Hawaii? Ronald's here back and forth between Long Beach and Hawaii. Raymond, the older one, lives in Hawaii. He has a daughter, but he's no longer married either, or never been, I don't know. Huh, okay. So then we go to Mary. I think she was named after my mother. That was the only one, Stella, something like that. Okay, and then you go back to, actually, you. Then you were next after Raymond. Yeah, then me. Okay, and then you're ma and then Mary's the last children. one. Yeah, I know we know about those. <laughs> and then Mary. Yeah, Mary has two. Okay. She married Doc Birds and her okay. What's your saddest memory as a child? My saddest memory as a child? Uh, one very, I was just telling the kids about it the other day, when my father did leave and my mother couldn't meet the rent, we came home from wherever we were, I think visiting my sister Jean. We were dispossessed, and to see the furniture in the street was the most embarrassing and hurtful thing I think anyone could experience. Wow. Now, you, you got to remember that in, in your family, what I'm telling people out here, you were living all in one bed, right? Something like that. There was oh, yeah, five of us in one bed. There's three girls and my two brothers. 
Hmm. Railroad flat. Oh, so that makes you sad when you think about that dispossessed yeah, now. You even cried. Oh, sure. So why? What's going on? What happened? It's embarrassing. What? I, mean, the, I don't want to pry in this. I was just saying, like, you know, Baki couldn't make the money. Is that what it was? So they, That's right. She used to clean houses and babysit. Let's see. Where is Ginge? Where is Ginge? There she is. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Well, we haven't ran out of tape there. Just in time for you to wipe your eyes. That was nice. What was your childhood like? Other than that, it was very good. I was always happy. Nothing bothered me, just like today. <laughs> and good. Were, you a good, really? were you a good student? Did you graduate high school and all no, that? No, I didn't graduate high school because when this happened at the time of being the eviction, I was 10 years old. See, my father had lost the house I was born in. And then he bought this house my sister Mary was in. 1929 was the Depression, and that's what happened. And then he turned to alcoholism. Hmm. He became an alcoholic, and this is what it was. And my mother said we had to treat it like a disease, and it was just like having cancer. He was still your father. When he was sober, he was a very good and loving father. When he was brained, he was brain dead, that's all. I tell you, your mom sounds like a real strong woman. She, oh, she was. And then that never happened to us again, you know. But it was the depression and the alcohol combined. So no. then we all went to work. My brother Harry, my brother Raymond, and I. I babysat and I clothes for 50 cents. And we all brought our money home, and that was it. And we lived happily ever after. <laughs> awesome. Now, what was Baki like, Grandma like? What was she like? She was a very loving, caring mother. We had to be in, you know, a curfew and all that stuff, and I wasn't allowed to go out with Italians. They were all pimps, and... <laughs> oh, that gets into a great story. She was really, really something. Okay, so now, how'd you meet your husband? What was that all about? I went to work, like I said, at 12 and 13. I worked in a coat factory, and then from then, I got into the city for more money, and he was the elevator operator in the building I worked in. And then he came to work there part-time, and the next thing you know, he took over the business, bought it, and I married the boss. Wow. <laughs> so, what was it like dating him? It was all right. He was never faithful. He always had Joan Reynolds and Joan Arnold, and he even had me bring them gifts for Christmas, told me to get them brunette powder, and I would get them natural and pure white, and say, Tony, say this. Oh, my God. Were you in love with him then? Oh, sure, right away. Oh, so you got your man, though. Oh, yeah. I went to his house every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, by myself, by bus, by subway, and I got there, kept his mother company till he came home. Oh, you were a nice girl. Oh, yeah. Now, but his mom, she liked you. Yes, his mother and father did. But, but your mother... Not Italian. But your mother did not like him. No, no, because he was Italian. So he turned out to be the best son-in-law going. When she had no place to go, she lived here with us. No, okay, that was nice. Let's go back to when she didn't like him. What was that like? I mean, did she ever hit you or anything? Oh, yeah, she knocked the tooth right out of my mouth. She called and dropped me off at the house, and I snuck in and told her I was in the bathroom. She said, oh, yeah, I saw that guinea bring you home, that pimp. <laughs> and she punched, and she hit, and she knocked my tooth out. So I called him, and I said, I'm not going with you anymore. Five years is enough. You're not committed to anything. And he said, no, 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 I'll tell you what, we're getting married right now. So in three weeks' time, we got married. I was 19 years old. Wow. After, you know, chasing him for five years. <laughs> so all you had to do was break up with him, and you got him to marry you. Yeah. <laughs> His father and mother put on the wedding at their house. That's when he had to play stickball and finish watching the World Series, whatever it was. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, and I went up the church steps and had to come back down. Now, apparently, if we found from your husband that you had your first two daughters by yourself in the hospital. Yeah, all my children by myself. So he wasn't there for my birth either? No, he, you, no, he was not. The lady next door took me, Mrs. Witty. That's I thought it was one. Fixman. No, Witty. Okay. That's Fixman right. took care of the children, Maria and Donna. Okay. Because they had to go to school that next day. So what were the births like, having Maria? Maria was fine. Donna was fine. No, I don't find no problem. They just done didn't want to be born. Maria went into labor at what's two thirty. Went to the hospital at four. She was born seven thirty eight. There's no problem. Hmm. With Donna, I went to the hospital at four in the afternoon, and she was born at nine fifty eight. Hmm. And she didn't want to come out, so she had a Denny Dimwood head. But I don't think that was her fault. The baby was ready to be born. They said, oh, here it comes, here it comes. we got to take you to the delivery room. Close your legs. 
and I think her head was out when I closed my legs. That's how she come dead. He did with. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I, that's the only thing I remember, and that's the reason I put down to it. Okay, now both of them were like easy to have, right, children? Yes. And easy, easy to raise, right? Very much so. But they were no problem. Well, Donna had allergies. She was allergic to milk. She turned blue at six weeks, had to get oxygen, rushed in the hospital. What was that all about? We have no idea. They just said her milk turned to mucus and cut off her breathing tubes or whatever. We will never, ever really know. So you almost she's lost there. her. Oh, yeah. She was, my mother-in-law was holding us and would eat, would eat. She's dead. She's dead. Doctor came to the house and he says, hold her. We're rushing her right to the hospital. He grabbed her, ran in. I filled in forms and they gave her oxygen. Kept her overnight. And they questioned Nancy and I because we were feeding her cereal for the first time. Who did it? What was it? Where did you buy it? You know, detectives came and everything. They thought it was foul play or something. Because there was no answer of why that happened. Wow. Okay, and then uh, I was born. Then you were born, 12 o'clock. I was over here taking care of four kids. Stravalli was taking Peggy, Mac, a very good friend of ours, Maria's babysitter, to uh, the convent to become a nun. And I was in the kitchen scrubbing the floors and taking care of Philip, Kathy, and I forgot who the other kid was, my own two, and somebody else. And you decided it wasn't the back pain, it was labor pains. It was 12 o'clock, the whistle blew. I called the lady next door. She took me. At 1 o'clock, you were born in South Nassau. 115. 115. <laughs> About 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it was nice. How long was Rhea's labor and Donna's labor? Maria, I tell you, it was 2 to 7.38. And Donna, 4 in the afternoon to 9.58. <clears throat> so you never had a long, long labor? No. Wow. No. Now, you lost a lot of children in between. I would have had 11. The last one was in 1963. I lost triplets, boys. Okay, that was... In between, before Maria, after Maria. How many before Maria? Eight. I mean, one. One before Maria. Maria, and then a lot in between Maria and Donna. And then a lot? And you. Well, yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I only had one miscarriage after you. That was the triplets. You were 59. This was 63. How many miscarriages between Donna and Maria? Do you remember? I, don't, I said it had to be eight. Eight? Miss I'm sorry, I'm sorry, five, because they had three kids. That would have been 11. That's right, five. You had five miscarriages between Maria and Donna. Right. How many, how many full term? None. None. Okay, they all went like month, two months, three no, months? No, the latest was the triplets. They were the longest. They're 63. How about between Donna and, and me? They were yeah, instantaneous, you know. Was there any in between, the two of us? Donna and Maria? Any? Yeah, between Donna and Maria, there was miscarriages, yes. And how about between Donna and myself? No. So for five years you didn't get pregnant at all? No. I didn't know that? No. Wow. No. Very interesting. Very. And after me, only once. Right. So after Donna, you said, that's it. We got Donna, that's, that's it. That's it. Huh. How was Anthony? Was he real supportive through all that? He was a working father. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hard worker. He was working, always working. Now he said something about you picked out this house. So were you oh, yeah. So basically, he seemed like he was the boss. But tell me the truth: were you the were you were you you were able he to had get your way, had to prod him. <laughs> and you were able to prod him. <laughs> so basically, you've been getting your way for years. Well, no, he had to make the final decision, even with this house. As much as I wanted one, he tried to sway me into other ones, Primo Caneros and all that, with dungeons in the basement and billiard rooms, and I didn't like it, look haunted. And you, so you're not glad that you took... I saw a house that nobody lived in and it was going to be mine to do what I want. And he came home and said, I, I bought you in that house. See, he decides, I don't decide. Uh -huh. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. The final decision is always his. Hmm. Just like with that vanity. And they want it taken. But <laughs> now, when I was growing up, I remember you and Anthony fighting all the time. This was rough for me, those times of years. What do you think? Because that was, I was drinking. So you think what does an alcoholic do? You're either happy or you fight. So I was happy outside and fought inside. Huh. Telephone. Well, we'll see who this is. So that was no sweat. You know? Well, how long are you... Everybody fights. They all set up to my kids grow up saying my mother and father were fighting. Valerie and Wayne say it. Elizabeth says it now. And Lisa. When did you stop drinking? Well, oh, I God. Being, um, right now. A couple of times. I, so the first, first time I stopped in. was about four or five years. Then I started okay. again for a year and a half, two years. So what year was that that you stopped? I don't even remember anymore, Mike. I'll tell you the God honest truth. Jeez. 
And that was a long time ago. If you were to guess years. I know, like, when my mother died, I wasn't drinking. Because I was at the KSC, I remember, July 14th, right? And What year? 1983. I remember that, that I wasn't drinking. Because we went to the restaurant after the third thing, and everybody was drinking. I thought, this is stupid, you know, for doing that. Huh. And I was a strong one. If anybody needed a drink, it was that day. Okay, yeah, we'll How did uh, Baki pass away? Old age, just old age. She had cancer in 1948 when my father died, and she lived with it until 1983. Huh. She fell down and broke her hip, and that's why she was in the nursing did, did that here? Yeah, both my, both your grandmothers fell down here and broke their hips. Huh. House, so she just died. She just died of old age. She, was it a painful for her? No. I remember. Was she always religious? Because I remember she always oh, did the rosary here. Always set up prayers and used the bingo card. If not a rosary bead, to count the same. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Even as you were a child growing up? Oh yes. Yeah, we had to say your prayers. We used to have to kneel down to say our prayers at the bed. There was no such thing as a bed and lay down to say. Huh. Who's here? Yeah. George and Michelle are here. Uh, okay, we gotta go now. Okay, it was nice talking with you. Alrighty. Bye.